side job over there. We run a vacuum cleaner. We connect it up to a 30 gallon tank. Connect the hose into that. Suck the coolant out of the coolant line. Put an O-ring down there behind that fitting, which is where it was leaking. And back up the rest of the coolant that leaked out down there. And this is Al. Al's moving from submarines on the east coast to west coast. Uh, yeah, so I was on a training submarine on the east coast and now I'm going to my first actual duty sub up in Seattle. Fantastic. Congratulations to you on that one. I and yeah, DOD and submariners. Yeah, we're, you know what the conversation is going to be this next couple of days. <laughs> yeah. And so now it's time to put the, all the coolant back in the system. Right. So if I open this up, yeah, see air's coming out, so you're flowing in now. Sweet. You've been training on submarines for the last how long? So I've been uh, training on actual submarines for the last nine months. Now for the, the year and change before that, I was basically in a classroom setting, learning how nuclear reactors work and how to operate them in theory. Right. The last nine months have actually been doing my job. My system, how complicated is it compared to your systems? Uh, this is very simple compared to child's play, you might say. Ch child's play would be one word for it. The deal is people think it's complicated. I don't. And I don't think you would either. In fact, I know you would. You, you know what a pump is. You know what a motor is. Yeah. You can tell the two apart. The well. I think it's really interesting because like the training that I go through, they just take high schoolers off the street yeah. and, and teach them how to do this shit, how to operate nuclear reactors. Well, our, yeah. Our submarines are operated. They take high schoolers off the street that are willing to study a lot. They take the smart ones. Right. Yeah. Uh, Rick Over, who's the admiral that built the nuclear raid Navy, said that I don't um, pick great people for my program. I pick people that have great potential. Right. So. This idea that you can pretty much figure out anything if you just put your mind to it is very real. It is. And if, you're, is. if you're willing to put in the time to learn how to do something, you can learn how to do almost anything. That's true. It just takes commitment to it. It's just a matter of what you fall in love with, what you put your passion into, what you put your work in. I think every human has the same brain. I think some of us just use it better than others. I think that's mostly true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're putting our ascending units in for uh, temperature. We got two, uh, two of them that are going in. This one here is a Murphy switch gauge, which means it's got a little switch in there that's really nice. It just makes contact when it gets too hot and it sets off an alarm to let you know that things are going to awry in the engine room. And we'll have another one like this that'll connect into the oil system for pressure and then another one for fuel pressure. And while Al here works on submarines, uh, Ryan here works on optics. Yeah. Explain that. So I work on uh, optical systems used for the U.S. Service Navy. I use them for situational awareness, just see what's going around, or gunfire control. And we're not talking about binoculars. We're talking about large, hundred pound plus systems with thermal imagers, things like that. That is cool. You've been doing that for how many years now? Nineteen, roughly. Yeah, and you don't work. You're not military, you work for Department of Defense, which is military, but you, as a civilian. Yes, I'm actually a U.S. Navy civilian employee. And you've been doing that since right out of college. Right out of college. And Ryan is fixing my uh, mistake I made on plumbing my system here. That is a relief valve down there. He's going to put a check valve in here, and that will isolate our accumulator from the pumps. Ryan is back at the hydraulic pipes. Everybody is, gets in this position when working on the hydraulics. What are you doing? You're installing a T, a check valve, and a pressure re regulator where it should be, not where it was. <laughs> and, uh, and Al over here it has uh, squeezing back in there, installing uh, fittings onto the engine for uh, the cinder units and the, the parameter first. This is the actual thing. So what it is, is uh, it's one of those bi-metal temperature sensors basically in the tip right down here. And he's going to tap a hole into the manifold for the exhaust where that will throw it in. And it basically tells you what the temperature of your exhaust is. Not one of those things you'd really care about much, except that we have the Hunderstead. So down under the floor here is the hydraulic unit, which changes the pitch of the propeller blades. That changes how much power you need from the engine. So if you pitch the blades too hard, you lug the engine, fuel goes past the cylinders without burning, and it burns in the exhaust manifold, raising the temperature significantly. So when you see that temperature spike, you know you need to back off the pitch of the blades. You're trying to pull too much water, and the engine's not gonna do it at that RPM. 
That's where you want it to be. You're sure? Well, I could put it in the top here, but I'm worried oh, about the shape. You're going into the bottom of it. Yeah. I'm worried about, I don't want to drill a hole here. Well, I don't want the shavings to fall yeah, into it. I like the idea of it being down there because it's hard to damage down there. It's going to be pretty safe and we're going to have to, the intake pipe come right here. It's going to be really out of the way. But yeah. you can, it'll still be easy to replace too because this is just, you know, this is like a low pressure fitting. Okay, now, yeah, the intake. Off and you can get you're to right, it. you're right. Okay. Yeah. So what he's done is he's taken grease and greased the tap. So see the chips stick right to it. Freaking navy comes and it works fine. He found a wrench that fits around the uh, the tap. That was handy. I have a, a set of metric ones of these and yeah. a set of standard ones. You can almost always find, since these don't have square corners on them, yeah. they have the real rounded ones. You can almost always either find a metric or a standard one that will fit whatever tap you're using. I mean, for from Oklahoma, you just get a crescent wrench out there and crank away and break that tap off a few times. It'll be all right. <laughs> then you got to take the manifold off, drill it out, weld it back. And and good. It, it's all taped and good. All right, beautiful. All right. It's just a little. And it's got to be just balls tight in there too. Yeah. How do you keep the glasses on your head all the time? They always fall off. That's the biggest thing I want to know. It's the hair, isn't it? Yeah. It's the hair. It's the hair. Oh, man. Okay, cool. All that's in. And uh, Ryan here is putting the steel pipe back in. And Al found... I found a line that has two oil pressure sensors mounted on it. Where does it go down to? It goes down to the oil galley in the block down there on the... the the Ford port in side of the motor. Very inconvenient location. Yeah. Well, now it's in a convenient location. And it has both cinders to be attached to it. Yeah. So yeah, this is really easy. All you got to do is mount up two more, uh, the two new sensors, and out with the old, in with the new. That is great for a first cut. Well done. Thank you. So just we just grind it around and drill a hole in the center. Nice. Yeah. Grinding wheels next. Yeah, another little side job completed here, so that just holds the capstan on. So we're rigging up our uh, hydraulic press to do work again to make hydraulic fittings, and uh, Ryan is working to put a uh, quick connector fitting up on top of this. I hadn't thought about using a dead blow hammer. Damn, that works great. Stealing that idea from Ryan. Oh, is that how you're doing that? Yeah. Oh, that looks so comfy. How's the yoga class? Never took it. Just the Navy. How right about that? Yeah, food in the kitchen. Yeah, that's a good thing. Is that good? Is that good? That's good. And they got both hoses done into there. That is great. High pressure and return. They'll feed the cylinders that uh, work the uh, rudder quadrant here. And then they also go off up onto the back deck and we'll use whatever we want up there. Originally, we were going to use this to lift the tender with hydraulics, but we still want that out there for our auxiliary equipment, pumps, that sort of thing. And we may switch over to lifting the tender with hydraulics. Who knows? Always best keep your options open. And I love being able to disconnect one end of the cylinder and being able to swing it out. We're going to have to plumb the hoses on here so they can still do that. Okay, working out hydraulics for the oil cooler for the transmission. And Al came up with a perfect mounting location for our Murphy switch gauges. Look at that. You can just see them as you walk by and they're out of the way and protected. So, love that. And there's the sensors for the fuel pressure. There's two of them. One of them just sets off an alarm and the other one actually goes to the gauge on the dash up top. And we have made our own adapter for the fuel return and there's the fuel in and both of those are routed together and all plumbed into our manifold over there. So the bottom manifold is fuel out to all three engines and the top one will be fuel return from all three diesel engines. Diesel engines always circulate their fuel so what they don't use they send back to the tank. So we can't get air through it? Is that the problem? Yeah. So when we pressure air, air comes in there. Air comes in here. Goes down high pressure line. Comes across. That check valve isn't opening up. Yeah. It should be dumping here. Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. You see there it no, it's the flow is right. Yeah. Okay, let me know. Okay. So we so. know we're getting pressured at least here, so it has to be 
That check valve. That check valve's damn down. it. That's that check valve in backwards. Bitch of a one. No, it's in the right direction. There's the arrow right there going that way. Yeah, and based on how this is designed, I couldn't see the arrow on this one, but right. it makes sense that this is in right. Damn, that's shitty. Yeah, well, it was a dollar a pound. <laughs> it was in the dollar a pound bin, though. Oh, uh, yeah. You're the guy for that job. Yeah. I'm gonna go paint boards. <laughs> That's Visualize right. myself. Yeah, Navy's getting ready to hit the road, but he's fixing the bumper on his truck. A little reinforcing job just to keep it from bending. Cause you're loaded a little heavy. A little heavy. First truck I drove was a lot like this one. Check this modification out for long distance travel. Little electric pump in there to pump fuel out of a tank so you can buy a lot when it's cheap. Take that, California. You admiring your work? Yep. Yeah. You've done a good job. I'm gonna miss you. Back, we're on the water with you. Oh, it's, yeah, that'd be fantastic. We put Ryan on a plane today. But you'll be back. <laughs> we're all ready to make more hoses. Just give the bumper out of Don't eat cameras. We don't eat cameras. Hey.